Hello Summoners and welcome back to Mobilitics, where today we have the patch 8.23 tier list Q&A video. Beginning with questions from YouTube this week, NWO Warlight Channel said, I don't understand how Darius is not at least A tier and York was S or A for a long time in low elo for those videos and now he wouldn't even be B. How is Pike better than someone like Darius, Alawi, or Yorick top? As far as Darius, honestly, just having total transparency to you guys, this is something internally the three of us have talked about. We're not really sure why Darius struggles in the win rate department even for lower ranks. Maybe he's harder to play than we imagine, or maybe he's just more niche. Darius is a champion that is fantastic versus tanks, and has always been really good versus tanks, and never really that bad versus carries. He has a pretty good laning phase, he has hard CC with his E, he has tons of damage, carry potential, true damage ultimate with resets, he should be a god in solo queue, but right now he isn't, and we're not entirely sure why. Like I said, maybe he is more niche than we think, and you're supposed to only pick him versus tanks. Even in competitive play, he could potentially be picked. I could see him being a counterpick to things like Orn or Trundle, but he's just not. Either way, I don't think Darius should be that poor or that poorly performing. He's probably okay, but he doesn't deserve to make the tier list based on a lot of factors. Mike Krasowski said, what happened to Rakan? For starters, Rakan was always kind of bad in low elo because he was just too hard to play. He was a little bit too hard to make work, and he has a very high skill ceiling and skill floor. Just to start, you can show a lot of mastery on the champion, and if you don't play him very well, you just kind of get blown up in teamfights when you engage. The thing is that he received nerf after nerf after nerf due to his competitive play viability and high elo prowess and we just can't recommend him anymore. One thing is that maybe mid lane Rakan will come back. I think Dark Harvest is pretty good on him, and mid lane Rakan is something that I've played over the years, but as far as support, you're just not as tanky as you used to be. Maybe some of the rune changes are better for you, maybe Guardian is pretty good, but I don't suspect Rakan coming back anytime soon without serious buffs, but then again, he'll be broken and competitive. Next question is from Greensaber200. I really don't get the tier list. Aurelian Soul has been and is still stomping in solo queue for the entirety of season eight. Nothing has changed about him. He has the highest win rate of any mid laner once again. That nerf he got a few patches ago didn't do anything. I think firstly to say that the nerf didn't do anything is just wrong. Maybe Aurelian Soul is doing okay and just fine in the matches he already stomped, but against matchups that were hard like Cassidan, or Fizz, maybe Aurelia, something like that, you absolutely will get stomped and you have so much less base health than you used to and it makes him significantly weaker. One thing as well to consider is that the Celerity nerf did come through and we will talk about Celerity when we get to the next question about Hecarim, but it's worth keeping in mind that some of these Celerity champions might have gotten a pretty big nerf. We'll have to see over time and see how their win rate and their stats play rate kind of adjust because of that. Aurelian is also a champion that probably received a lot of indirect nerfs with the season changes. Asol was always a champion that you wanted to run around the map, four man dive bot lane with your jungler, kind of be that second annoying jungle threat. And if this season was trying to eliminate some of those things, eliminate early first tower dives, those things are exactly what Aurelian Soul wants out of solo queue, and with an extended laning phase, he also becomes indirectly much weaker, saying he has received no changes with the direct nerf, the celerity changes, and this season changes, I would just have to disagree that he's received nothing whatsoever. He is still really good, and Aurelian Soul mains still should play him, but recommending him to be the top of the top, cream of the crop S tier now might be a bit of a stretch, but we will see. I appreciate your feedback, and he's definitely a champion we're keeping an eye on, so don't think we're not looking at him, because we are. This week, we had two questions about Hecarim. We had Super Analyst saying, I just played Hecarim top and it's absolutely insane. I landed against an Urgot and destroyed him, it was super fun. And then we also had Willy Tenor saying, where is Hecarim? I see him in low elo 60% of the games, in high elo even more. And if he isn't picked in high elo, he is banned. And if he is picked, he wins because of the insane jungle path. 
I will be fair and frank, I think you're talking about the Predator jungle path. I'm not 100% sure. Please correct me if I'm wrong or leave a comment if you know what Willy Tenor is talking about. I think he's talking about the Predator path where you go like red into Krugs, into Raptors or Scuttle or something like that. Recall, get your Predator boots. I think it's just red into Krugs. Recall, get your Predator boots, activate your Predator and then get blue and then you're like level three with double buffs. If that's the path you're talking about, yeah, that's really good on him. I agree Hecarim is really good. And if we saw no celerity changes whatsoever, we actually might have even seen him in S tier. But the celerity changes were much worse for him than probably any other champion. It's a significant nerf. However, I guess we'll see. I think Hecarim top with Phase Rush, Grasp, Conqueror might be pretty good. I think that's actually pretty darn good. So keep an eye on that. Hecarim top may be even better than Hecarim jungle. This is a champion, again, just like Aurelian Soul, these celerity champions will have to see how that change plays out over the next couple of weeks, but keep in mind that he might be a little bit weaker than before, but he's not a terrible champion. Don't think that he's a bad champion, he's not. Moving on, we had a question from Instagram this week from Spurs saying, where is my girl Alawi? I assume that his question has a lot to do with the Kleptomancy buffs, so if Alawi takes Klepto, you hit your E, then you auto W and get two Klepto procs. That's pretty crazy, I agree with you, that is probably insane. It's just the thing around her is not too good. The meta around Alawi and surrounding her just doesn't suit her purposes all that well. Usually junglers are spam ganking lanes, and Alawi, unless you 1v2 them, which is very possible, don't get me wrong, but typically camping Alawi early game is going to set her behind, and you need tops with hard CC. If you don't have hard CC out of the top lane at the moment, you become a significantly weaker champion, unless your laning phase is just so unbeatable like Rengar top lane, it's just so hard to not be a tank or a carry with hard CC at the moment. If the meta shifts and these games become elongated, Alawi has time to scale, to split push, to skirmish in the side lane, and it's not so much about team fighting and early skirmishes, Alawi instantly becomes S tier because these buff to Kleptomancy are great. There's one guy in high elo in NA that makes her work named Dirty Mobs. I will leave a link to his profile in the description down below. So if you're interested in Alawi and you want to learn from the best, honestly, this guy is probably your best resource. So I'll leave a link to his profile down below. And our final question this week, it's a doozy, but let's go into it from the blog from Matthew Yi. Why are your tier lists so different from other lists? I see Rengar top and S tier on your list, but almost never in any other. It's especially apparent in this patch. You say bot lane is crazy, but it seems pretty normal on other lists. Can you explain please? Thanks. For our tier list, we are 100% dedicated to helping you climb, helping you understand the meta in its totality, and help you understand the game around you the best you possibly can in order to gain LP. Those are some big words and those are some big goals, but let me explain them one by one and maybe you can understand where we're coming from. Let's use your example of Rengar Top, because it's a great example. We have him as S tier and A tier kind of in between there for both low and high elo. Why? Maybe it's a better question to ask why other tier lists wouldn't have Rengar Top in their tier list. Is it because they don't know about him? Is it because it seems unconventional? Is it because it's only apparently played by one tricks or they think it's only played by one tricks? Why would that be the case? Statistically, Rengar Top has a high enough play rate, has a great enough win rate, and has more than enough reasons to be S tier. On top of that, Rengar is a champion that is also fantastic in the jungle, which means that your investment for learning Rengar is almost two birds in one stone. Queuing jungle top or top jungle as a Rengar main, as long as you can play both roles decently, if you know that Rengar is really good in both of them, then all you have to do is learn Rengar and then learn the roles around you. You don't really have to think about two things at once because you know which champion you can play for both. This means you can become mechanically proficient on Rengar. This means that you can funnel into learning him for both top and for jungle, and then you're off and off to the races. You're learning a hard to play champion who scales well with elo, by the way. He has a much lower win rate in bronze than in challenger. If we are ever going to recommend a champion as a severe learning curve or severe mastery curve champion, such as Rengar or Riven, LeBlanc, something like that, then the reward better be truly worth it and they must be really, really good at the moment. So what about the bottom lane? What about Marksman? Well, if you look at Kai'Sa, Compare Kaisa's performance to other marksmen only. Compare Kaisa to Caitlyn, or Tristana, Ash, something like that. Compare Kaisa 
to other marksmen who might be struggling at the moment, and you say, you know what, Kaisa seems pretty good. Kaisa seems pretty overpowered. It seems like that champion, that marksman champion, is really good. But you know what? The rest of the game doesn't care about Kaisa being better than other ADCs, other marksmen, because you can play way more than that in the bottom lane. Our tier list is not suggesting that we think we can get all Vayne players to start playing Karthus or Heimerdinger. We don't suspect that at all. But what we are saying is that if you can play Heimer, if you can play Karthus, you should consider playing them in the bottom lane. Their roles are much more suited to the bottom lane at the moment. ADCs, marksmen take way way too long to scale, and specific champions like Yasuo just totally destroy them in every way. Wind wall is impossible to play against for a ranged marksman. Heimerdinger constantly pushes you in, Karthus does way too much damage, you can't even lane versus Mordekaiser's sustain and he gets double XP. And the only marksmen who can even keep up are the ones that are in S tier. Lucian, Draven, MF. Those marksmen, who are more non-traditional marksmen and more like spellcasters in some way anyway, they can keep up. But traditional, on-hit, or normal ADC marksmen simply can't keep up to all of these other champions who wreck them in the bottom lane. Again, Kai'Sa's performance comparative to the rest of the pool, yeah, it looks fine, looks just fine. But compared to Karthus, it's not even close. I do think there is one big fault to our theory, and that that assumes that people want to play other stuff. That assumes that all of a sudden, if it's a tank meta, you're just going to have fun playing tanks. We agree that that might be a fault, right? All of a sudden, if it's tanks mid lane, every LeBlanc player is now just going to play Galio. Probably not, right? Probably not. But unfortunately, what can we really do? We can't keep track of every user in some ways. We just have to tell you what currently works in that lane and hope that you guys can kind of adapt. I understand that that maybe is hard to swallow, but at the same time, League kind of works that way, right? You must be able to adapt. If LeBlanc is all of a sudden terrible and Maokai mid lane is broken and S tier, then you kind of do need to play it. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching the patch 8.23 tier list Q&A. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, guys. We're approaching 100k. We want to hit it before the end of the year. So go, go, go. Press subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time.